Today, I wanna to break down the whole macro clipper thing into bite-sized, easy to digest portions. So you don't gotta put weeks and weeks reading article after article and a whole bunch of messing around like I did to get the basic understanding that you need to be able to get macros up and running on your 3D printer. Because that's the all you really need is a basic understanding. There are a whole bunch of brilliant and talented clipper enthusiasts out there that have already done all the hard work for us and compiled a whole bunch of ready to use macros on GitHub and Reddit so that we can pick and choose and mod for our benefit. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but one of the most intimidating things for me getting into Clipper was macros. The whole thing just seemed a little too involved for me, you know? I mean, I only have a very basic understanding of programming and I'm not really coming from a programming background. On top of that, I got a whole lot on my plate, you know? I mean, like I got a wife and kids and the job and craziness, you know? I don't have a lot of time to really get into it. But being that this is a very important part of understanding and getting the most out of Clipper, I stuck to it, got my head in the game, and you know what? It's not that bad. It's not as complex or as difficult as I assumed before. So if you're interested in finding out how this amazing feature can boost your 3D printing to the next level, stick around and let's get into it. Okay, so let's start out by explaining what essentially macros are. Macros are essentially packages of code that your printer reads out together and performs as a single command. Kind of a little bit like a sandwich. You know, it's one piece of food, but it's built up from like a bunch of other different pieces of food, but you kind of just eat it as one. It's kind of the same with macros. Kind of like little printer sandwiches. If you want to level your bed, there's a macro for that. Want to do some PID tuning? There's a macro for that too. Basically, the vast majority of things that you wanna get done for your 3D printer, you can get done using macros. From changing, updating, and modding hardware, to tuning and calibration, to translating Marlin G-code that Clipper doesn't really understand, to make your life a whole lot easier, you can use a macro to get that done. Macros can basically do it all. But in my opinion, it's super important to know how they're structured, so you don't accidentally update your printer with a macro that only to find out your printer doesn't support it or you don't have the same size print bed and get all kinds of weird errors going on. So let's get into a very basic explanation on how macros are structured. Building custom macros is far too complex a topic to really get into in this video and that's not really what this video is particularly about but I still think it's very important to have a basic knowledge of how macros are built so you can have greater control of implementing them and modding pre-customized ones yourself. In Clipper, Macros are built around a programming language called Jinja 2. Kind of like Ninja, but not quite. And they follow an exact but simple structure. Basically, you could write the desired action in the instructions in the order you want them to be performed if you have a multi-line command set. It's important to use indentation. And just like all programming languages, comments are also critical for explaining what the command does. And also so you can kind of keep track of what you're writing down there. So other people who are looking at your macro can understand what you're trying to do. And comments are not read by the printer, only people trying to use your macro. So whatever starts with a number sign, is considered by Clipper to be a comment and is not executed. Clipper also has a series of parameters, variables, and actions that allow you to retrieve data and issue commands to control all the aspects of the firmware. What may be an M or G command in Marlin may exist in a separate name in Clipper, but most regular G code commands are recognized by Clipper. So you can basically build a lot of your macro using those GCO commands. So if you're interested in building your own custom macros and you really want to get into it and because it's like a whole nother world, I'm going to link an awesome page by this guy named Mental. He has an extensive custom macro building tutorial over there. And if you're into that, you might want to check that out. But for those of us that don't have the time or the programming knowledge to really get into that at this point, don't worry about it because I got you covered. And now that you're armed with the basic understanding, of how these Clipper macros work, it's time to look at where to pick up pre-packaged macros. So the truth is there are a ton of amazing GitHub pages and forms that have incredible macros out there and I'm not gonna obviously be able to cover them all in this video, but I have tried to gather the best ones that I found so I can bring them straight to you. And the first one I wanna get into is the Print Area Bed Mesh Macro Page by Turge08. Hope I said that right. This is an awesome macro that lets you generate bed leveling only for the print area that you're gonna be printing in. And what's great about this particular macro as opposed to other ones that are similar is that 
this macro uses already existing BL touch settings and Z offset. So you don't have to mess around too much with the customization. And I think that's pretty cool. And it can really speed up your prints by cutting down the time it takes to level the bed each time you're gonna try to print out an object, if that's something that you do on a regular basis. The next one I wanna get into, I touched on in a previous video, link up here, and this one may be obvious to some. It's Clipper's main macro depository on GitHub. This page has a ton of critical macros, like start and end print macros. So start and end print macros in your slicer can really help you to streamline your 3D printing process and ensure consistent results by tailoring these macros to the specific needs of your print or your print Printer. You can really improve your print quality, reduce print times, and avoid errors or issues that can happen during your print, but that's a topic for a completely separate video. But that's not all because you can find a whole ton of other super useful Clipper macros on Clipper's main GitHub depository. Things like M600 filament change macro to translate Marlin's G-code M600 file to something that Clipper can actually read. Environmental sensor macros, BL touch macros, and a whole ton of other ones. Another awesome macro that I wanna to talk to you guys about is Red Gobo's bed leveling macro. I hope I pronounced that right. This one is awesome if you're not leveling your bed before every print and you don't remember to keep up with it. So you find yourself leveling your bed like once a year. No longer, because this bed leveling macro takes care of all of that by setting up your printer to level itself out once every 10 prints automatically. And this is an awesome feature and can save you a headache or two. Now again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there are like a million different resources and libraries out there, but these are some of the ones that I personally found I use the most and I put links to all of them in the description so you can easily check them out for yourself. Along with some affiliate links for some awesome 3D printing gear that I found most useful in my 3D printing journey. But at this point you might be thinking to yourself, well that's all well and good, but how am I supposed to get this up and running on my printer? And rightly so. But before I get into the meat of this video, just let me say that if you find that you're enjoying this, please consider subscribing and maybe even hitting that like button. And please bear with me for one more moment because I just wanna show some gratitude and say thank you to all the amazing people that posted some really amazing comments and to all the people that stick with my tiny channel and show me support. It really means a lot to me and you guys are my motivation to keep going on YouTube. I just really have to say thank you. But enough about that, let's get back into it. So all these resources and pre-made macros are great, but if you're wondering how to get them up and running on your printer, don't worry because it's relatively simple. The first thing we're gonna do is save the macro by going into your printer config file and pasting in the macro you want installed right in there. I find it's best to paste it above the view documentation settings at the bottom. Once that's done, you just save the file and restart. Just remember to avoid pasting the macro under the save config section and be sure not to accidentally add it inside another macro sequence. I'm not gonna elaborate. Once that's done, there are three easy ways to run your macro. But keep in mind that some of these depend on the macro that you're using. So be sure to read the instructions on each macro before deciding how you're gonna set it up. So option number one, you can map the macro to a button on your printer's user interface, which can, which can be accessed through your web UI, like OctoClipper, Mainsail, or Fluid, for example. Personally, I'm using the Sonic Pads UI. It's basically a reskin, but never mind about that. You can manage them right from the macro button window, right in the home screen. This is a convenient way to quickly run macro like bed leveling with just the press of a button. Option number two, you can also run a macro by typing its name into the console terminal and pressing enter. This is useful if you prefer running command line or if you don't like having a button mapped to that macro. Finally, you can set up Clipper to automatically run a macro when it appears in the G-code being executed from your slicer. When Clipper parses a G-code file, it will recognize any command that matches the name of the defined macro and execute it. For example, the M600 Marlin command for filament change. This is a powerful feature that can save you a lot of time and streamline your workflow. So this is really just the very tip of the iceberg when it comes to Clipper macros and customization. By utilizing these macros, you can save time and improve the quality of your prints. So if you wanna take your 3D printing game to the next level, don't be intimidated by macros, embrace them. By the way, just in case you might be interested, I started an Etsy shop where you can find some 3D printing apparel that I designed. I don't know, you might wanna check it out. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy this one next. See you in the next one, guys. Take care, bye-bye.